Um, so uh, once you're in the field, uh, we're going to ask that you select your site. So there's a lot of things. Um, we mentioned this a little bit beforehand with regards to access, water, terrain, and that sort of thing. But the more pre-planning you, you do, the less, the greater the likelihood that you're going to get something that you're actually looking for, the less surprise you're going to have. Um, we'd ask you to consider this, the landscape, the surrounding area, and more specifically, walk around it. Uh, when you're staking your parcel, walk through the interior of your parcel. Uh, you know, you might find that there's a low-lying area, a swamp or something like that, that's gonna prohibit possibly the usage of your parcel you're looking for. So familiarize yourself well with the parcel, not just the boundary um, of the parcel. Uh, select something that's gonna be uh, within your budget, something that, that has the amenities that, that you're looking for and you're, you're gonna be able to follow through and uh, be successful with. Um, there's a lot of potential features that could affect uh, the layout of your parcel with regard to the, either the staking instructions, performing the staking rules, um, or your ability to adequately develop that, per that parcel for your purposes, for whatever specifically that you're looking for. Um, when you're out there in the area, you're probably going to meet a, uh, you're going to meet some some stakers when you're out there in the field. Um, and so we highly recommend that you get to know them, you know, talk to them. Again, some of the greatest successes that we've had are folks that went out there, they're all kind of looking to stake in an area, they get out there and there's other people out there. They start talking together, they all work together, and they, I mean, many hands making light work, they get the parcels, they do a very good job of them, Every, everybody's happy with the outcome that they get. Um, so we're gonna discuss a little bit about, uh, about parcel modification with regards to seniority, and we'll, di we'll discuss that later, so I'm not gonna get into it here, but um, specifically, if you go out there, if you find somebody, uh, you know, whatever staking, you know, in, uh, in the area, you may not brush across any, you know, uh, brush or flag lines, any markings out that are out there in the field without getting permission from us first. Um, the other thing is you may not brush, flag, mark in any way, uh, basically, in under any way mark or claim that parcel prior to 8 a.m. on February 13th. Um, so that being said, you can go out there, you can walk around the area. We recognize that there's going to be footprints on the snow. That's, that's fine. So walk around the area, familiarize yourself with it. You can even camp on the site if you wanted to. Um, however, somebody can still set up a camp right next to you and somebody can start staking that next morning at 8 a.m. as well. Um, so if you come across anything that's out there in the field that's out there prior to 8 a.m., and, and please, do not cons do, please do not take this as a regular problem. I, I mean, I, I, I can't recall this ever actually happening, but, uh, but it's, it's, it's unlikely. If, however, you do come across something out there in the field, please document it as best you can, bring the information back to us. And, and we'll see what, see what we can do about it, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Um, that said, if you're planning on accessing an area that's in a little bit more remote or location, so you choose to build a trail uh, to that area, and if you were choosing to build a trail prior to 8 a.m. on February 13th, that's fine. You can go out there, you can construct a trail out there to that area. There's a couple things to consider, though. Um, although, by generally allowed uses, you can cut a trail to five foot wide using hand tools, and you can even flag that trail so you can actually find your way down it. You may not use any portion of that trail as your boundary if you're going to be putting in that trail prior to 8 a.m. So that would constitute pre staking um, Another thing to consider with, uh, with regards to trails is that um, from a kind of a tactical perspective of constructing a trail, if you're going to construct a trail into your parcel, so if you stake a parcel and then you're going to put a trail in there and potentially through your parcel, recognize the fact that we reserve a 60 foot easement on any trail that's active and in use at the time of staking. So if you build a trail through your parcel, you're going to end up with a 60 foot easement through your parcel. You might want to end that trail at your parcel. Additionally, if the if not having neighbors is something that's of value to you, if you construct a trail out there, that trail may. Uh, that trail may entice access along itself, and as such, you might have other people staking along that trail. You can construct a trail by generally allowed uses. That is still a public trail to public lands, so you cannot restrict access along it. All right, so uh, the requirements, and um, this is just a, a brief summary of the, of the requirements that are considered, uh, or that are described, excuse me, in your staking instructions. So I'm gonna go over these in, in fairly limited detail, but, um, but if you have any questions about this, or if you've already read this and you have questions about other, uh, other requirements, restrictions within the area, please let us know. Um, so specifically, when you stake a parcel, it has to be within the staking period. We, or within the, excuse me, within the staking area and within the staking period. Um, we cannot convey you a parcel that's outside of the staking boundary. Statutory, there's, we, there's nothing we can do. Um, it has to be within the, the, acreage, uh, the acreage requirements. That's another requirement of the program. The minimum is five acres, the maximum is 20 acres. We cannot go outside of that. Um, if you are pretty close, if you're 5.0, excuse me, 
If you're 4.99 acres, we can adjust it to five acres. If you're 20.01 acres, we can adjust it to one. Um, so, so don't get too concerned about, about that. Try to be as accurate as you can within those boundaries, but that's, but that's fine. Um, reasonably compact. Uh, so a reasonably compact parcel is we are looking for something that is square, rectangular. It can be trapezoidal, it can be, you know, whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be a perfect parallelogram, that's fine. Um, but it has to be reasonably compact. We don't want any of the proverbial amoeba parcels. You know, the ones that have 12 corners and very oddly shaped ones to conform to topography and such. No, it is reasonably compact. Um, we have a two to one uh, length to width ratio, length to width ratio uh, for the parcel. So what, the, what specifically we're looking at, recognizing the fact that all parcels are not gonna be perfectly rectangular. Um, what we're looking for is a parcel that is roughly midpoint to midpoint on the width, midpoint to midpoint on the length, um, that is roughly within, the well, it's two to one or less, in fact, is what we're looking for. So ideally, we're trying to avoid any long, skinny parcels within. Um, so water bodies pr present some specific issues with regards to staking along a water body, uh, because they're, they're generally curvilinear in nature, um, they're, they can be fairly sinuous, and we have some very specific instructions. One being 33%, uh, no more than 33% of your parcel boundary may be along a water body. So what that means is effectively one long side of that parcel may be along a water body. If it's rectangular, five acre parcel will be 330 feet by 660 feet. 660 feet of that parcel could be along the water body. Likewise, a 20 acre parcel, 660 by 1320, that 1,320 feet could be along the water body. However, there's other restrictions in there that you may not have discontinuous frontage along a water body. So you can't have you know, a parcel that basically has part of the parcel, the one side of the parcel along a stream, and then the stream kind of goes around the top side of the parcel and then picks it up over here, because that could create a remnant parcel of state land, an unmanageable remnant, we don't want that. Um, likewise, you can't stake between two separate water bodies as well. Um, for any public water bodies, uh, which are, have, are going to be noted on your staking plat and as, uh, as well as supplemental staking instructions, uh, public water bodies, you may not, uh, you have to stake up to or 330 feet away from that public water body because that, that public water body is a surveyable boundary as it were. Um, so much like any other surveyed boundary, up to or 330 feet away. So a little note on public water bodies. Um, we have done our best to identify those water bodies that are public before we've gone out to the offering. However, we haven't walked around every square into these areas, and as such, you may encounter a water body that is considered public. Public water bodies are considered a water body, a stream that is 10 foot wide or wider is gonna be public, or a lake or a pond that is 10 acres large or larger. Uh, so if you stake across a public water, a water body that is not on the map, that is later determined to be public, your parcel will be truncated at that water body and you will be subject to a 50 foot access easement you know, along it. So if you find something that's likely public, just don't stake over it. Um, if it's a pond, likewise, you'll be just meandered around the pond. If there is a public water body within your parcel, so it's very unlikely, but although the parcel, does, the, the program does allow for 20 acre parcels, if there's a 10 acre pond and you stake entirely within that pond, that the pond within it, if it, it's determined to be a pu uh, public water body, yeah, that's fine. But you're going to have an access easement to the pond and all the way around the pond as well. So a little bit of planning about water bodies. Uh, again, as noted, if there's a trail that's active and in use at the time of staking, it will be subject to a 60-foot easement at, uh, at the time of survey. So uh, even if you create that trail, you, you may be subject to that easement. Um, so, if there are serialized trails within the area, serialized being they have been assigned a serial number or an ADL number uh, or an RST number. So, if they are indicated on that map, you may not stake across those, those trails if they are containing an uh, ADL or RST number. Uh, so, you can stake either, you, know, you have to stake either up to that easement or, um, 100 feet or 330 feet away from that trail. If it is a trail that's active in use at the time of staking, if it's just a trap line trail or you know, a random ATV trail out there, you can stake over it. You don't have to stake right up to it or within 330 feet of it. Uh, but you will have a 60 foot easement through or along your parcel, wherever that is actually located. Um, there may be trap lines out in some of these, uh, some of these areas. Um, that, that's fine. You can use a trap line for access. It's still public land. Um, but, uh, but we would reserve a, an easement along that. Um, section lines. Um, on your staking map, you'll see all the squares on there. Each one of those squares represents one mile. Uh, that's a, it is a section. 
um, you may stake across uh, section lines. However, uh, you will be subject to a 100 foot easement across uh, any section line, whether that's surveyed or protracted. You may not stake across a surveyed section line or a township line, uh, but you can stake across protracted section lines, just recognizing the fact that there's gonna be a 50 foot easement either side of that line. 